It was April 1st, 2001. I was at home watching TV when I heard a big bang on my back door. I didn't know who or what it was. I thought it was a raccoon or something, so I kept watching TV. I will never forget what I heard. Someone whispered, I am coming for you. I turned to see who it was, but no one was there. I went outside and yelled, who's there? I went back inside and then I saw it. It was a man with a white rabbit mask holding a kitchen knife. I ran to the kitchen and grabbed a knife and turned on the light. The guy took off his mask and it was my friend, Fred. I was relieved and he yelled, April fools. I asked how he managed to get so far when he whispered in my ear. He looked confused. To my surprise, he said, I never whispered in your ear. That's when I knew something was in my house. I told Fred to hide and call the cops. When the cops got there, they saw a man with long black hair robbing stuff from my house. He had a pistol and some pocket knives. The cops told me he had broke out of prison a couple days before the incident. Back then, my brother and I used to play with a lot of guns, especially water guns. One night, we got our flashlights and pretended we were the police. It was around 10 p.m. We were in the backyard with my brother's friend playing when we saw a tall black guy. We were just staring at him. I don't know who he was or why he was there. Then he suddenly said, Hey, can I play with you? Bitch, please, my brother said. Then the tall guy seemed to go into a strange position and smiled at us creepily. I was so scared, so I aimed my gun at the guy when my flashlight lit up the face of the man. I will never forget what I saw. There was a big X on the middle of his forehead, and the guy was eating a piece of glass, literally eating it and bleeding. We didn't know what to do while we ran back into the house. My brother's friend jumped outside the fence and he didn't come back. We were standing near the window and my brother told me to call mom and dad. When I called my mom, I heard a loud smash coming from the big window on the front door. My brother quickly grabbed my shirt and dragged me upstairs. At that moment, I couldn't talk to my mom because then I would make a sound. We stayed silent for about 20 seconds. Then we heard a footstep near my side. I was about to tilt my head to take a look when I suddenly heard a gun get reloaded. My brother quickly punched the guy. I ran so fast downstairs. We had to live. We were almost to the door when we heard a gunshot. We quickly ran to the nearest neighborhood and told someone what happened. We called mom and dad and also dialed 911. When the police came to our house, they found fresh blood trails from the living room to the bathroom. There, they found the guy bleeding to death, as if the guy wanted us to watch him commit suicide or possibly kill us. Well, I don't know, but that was some serious madhouse shit, and I would never, ever forget what happened. Black-Eyed Woman I was 11 years old at the time. It was a horrible event. I lived in Texas, but my family decided to go to California during the summer of 2015. It wasn't going to be a long time, so my family of six, including me, stayed at my aunt's house. One night, my parents went to a party, and both of my brothers and I didn't want to go, so we stayed behind. My aunt's daughter stayed with us too. It was around 6 p.m. My parents said they were coming back around 2 a.m. Hearing that gave me goosebumps, since we were staying at a two-story house. I've always been scared of two-story houses for this reason. As soon as our parents left, we all decided to eat snacks. Well, we wanted to, but there weren't any. My cousin asked us if we wanted to go to the store with her. Since she was already 19, she could drive by herself. My brother said yes, but I told him... I do want snacks, but I don't want to go. I thought that my brothers would want to stay behind too, since they were just two years older than me. But instead, they just said, okay. They all left without me. I was all alone. Fifteen minutes in, 
I was sitting on the couch playing on my iPad. Suddenly, I heard a sound coming from upstairs. I decided to check what it was, but as soon as I started to go up the stairs, a glass cup fell down the stairs. I ran to my uncle's room and hid inside the closet. After two minutes of hiding, the lights in the room started flashing. I could see it from the crack under the door. I wanted to text my brother, but I left the iPad on the couch. Soon after, I heard another sound from upstairs. Well, that's how I knew that whatever was doing all the scary stuff was definitely upstairs. I decided to run out of the house, and then tried to ask the next door neighbors to let me into their house for a bit. But before I could, I checked the upstairs window when I got outside, and I saw a figure in one of the rooms. It was a clear image since it was barely 7 p.m. The figure was definitely the creepiest thing I've ever seen in my life. I saw a woman with a black dress. She was pale and had dark eyes. It was as if she accidentally messed up her makeup and got black makeup all around her eyes. She also looked kind of like a nun. I stood there, watching her for like 10 seconds. And then I saw a car driving in from the side. I moved near the garage and the car came closer. It parked at the house. And I realized it was my cousin with both of my brothers. I was relieved. They asked me why I was outside. And I said I wanted to take a picture of the house from outside. I didn't tell them the truth. They didn't realize I didn't have my iPad when I said this. Once we got inside the house, I followed them upstairs. I was obviously behind them since I was scared. Nothing happened the rest of the day until that night. It was 10 p.m. It was raining. I just wanted to see the thunder so I moved the curtains to look out the window. A bit of light came in because of the lightning. And that's when I saw it again. The figure was in the neighbor's parkway, just staring at the house. I will never forget that night no matter how hard I try. Sometimes while I'm having fun, I'll stop and remember and the thought always ruins my day. The thought that the woman from that night might always be out there looking for me. This event happened when I was around 13 years old. I was going on a family road trip with my parents and siblings. My brother was 16 at the time and my half-sister was 21. I don't completely remember where we were going or where we stayed since it was almost 15 years ago. All I remember was that we rented a cottage in a small village. Next to the village was a lot of mountains surrounding the perimeter, and there were probably only 20 houses in the village. Next to the cottage was a small lake that was big enough to kayak in, and to the right of the little lake was a small shed. The shed was very old, and its ceiling had been poorly repaired. There was ivy growing all over it. Although this may not seem scary, the door was wide open and the place we were staying at was all fenced off with a really high fence. This probably meant that no one would be able to come into our property. Later that same day, my brother and I decided to check it out since we had nothing else to do other than swim in the lake before dinner. Bear in mind, this happened in the winter, meaning it would get dark much earlier than in the summer. We walked up towards the shed, and as we walked towards it, we realized that a source of light was shining through the ceiling. It didn't seem like it was a normal ceiling light, but was almost like a torch. We saw the light slowly move around in between the cracks of the shed. Then, in one sudden motion, the light randomly pointed at us. My brother and I were petrified by the situation. We both looked at each other with blank expressions. Our parents were in the lounge watching TV, so they wouldn't be able to hear us at all if we cried out for help. I don't like to be cliché, but my big brother is a very strong person, emotionally, physically, and mentally. So I was surprised when I saw his lower lip tremble out of the corner of my eye. I thought he was going to protect me by telling me what to do, but instead he just stood there, frozen, 
like me, with a petrified face as the bright light blinded us through the gaps between the walls of the shed for what felt like an eternity. Suddenly, the light switched off. A small sense of relief hit me as the light turned off, but I was still scared for my life. Because the light was shining on our faces for so long, our eyes were not used to the dark. When we tried to escape by running in the opposite direction towards the cottage, we couldn't see where we were going. Then, as if the situation couldn't get any worse, we heard a loud shuffling sound coming from the shed. We could hear the sound starting to crescendo as we ran silently towards the cottage. The sound was getting louder and louder. Soon after, I could just make out a hollow voice coming from behind us. I hesitantly looked behind me. To my horror, I saw a middle-aged man standing next to the shed with a flashlight in his hand. His hands were covered in what looked like blood, and his hair was greasy as if he never showered once in his life. He had a long beard that looked tangled and disgusting. In a faint voice, he said, Come here, child. I have many toys in here. Do you want to play some games with me? He said this with a creepy smile and eyes wide open without blinking. He looked as if he was talking to me. I instantly screamed as loud as I could, and my brother grabbed my hand with dear life as we sprinted back into the cottage. We told our parents what happened, and I hugged my brother and sister with tearful eyes. They didn't believe us at first because they were so shocked by the situation and so confused. But when they saw the monstrous man's face pressed up against the window with a bloody butcher's knife in his hand, they screamed in horror and immediately called the police. The police were nearby since it was a small town, but as the sirens came, we saw the man run back to his shed, and unfortunately, they never caught him. They asked us what he looked like and what he said to us. The police told us that a girl that looked similar to me, and was roughly the same age as me, was murdered last month because of that man we saw from the shed. I can't imagine what would have happened if we stayed in a busy town that weekend, or if the police didn't make it in time. I am now scared to go near sheds after that incident, and I will never be the same. A situation like this has not happened since, but I really hope that man is either caught or is being chased by the police because those few moments scarred me for life. I am a 16-year-old girl. Years ago, in the summer, I left my place in the city to visit my aunt and uncle's house in the suburbs of New Jersey. I mainly went to hang out with my cousin. Let's call her Kate. My cousin and I are three years apart. My aunt and uncle both worked in Manhattan. One day, my aunt and uncle decided to attend a party after work. During the day, Kate and I went down to the street to her friend's house because they had a pool. We spent all day swimming. When we walked back to her house, it was around 4 p.m. It was still sunny out. All of a sudden, Kate's phone stopped working. Nothing to worry about. I still had mine and it was brand new. We spent another hour outside and figured it was time to call my aunt to tell her we were okay. On the steps, I pulled my phone out but it was not working. We took the battery out, put it back in, but still nothing. With no way to call my aunt, we just went inside the house. It was maybe 5 p.m. Kate's older sister Julie, a high schooler, was spending the night at her friend's house so we were all alone. In the living room, we put the two sofas together as we normally did when I slept over. We were both tired and ready to sleep. We had been left alone like this a lot of times, so it didn't faze us. The house is big and gets pitch black. All of a sudden, we heard a big bang that sounded like brass or metal coming from across the hall. We got up and checked Kate's room. Nothing had fallen. We went back to the living room to sleep. Maybe two hours later, we heard another bang coming from the room. We checked again, nothing had fallen. This time, we were a little unnerved. We went back but stayed up, then shortly heard a bang a third time coming from the same room. We were nervous. We went on opposite sides of the hallway and walked in the room this time like a little SWAT team. Everything was intact. 
we couldn't sleep after. We stayed up on the sofas and saw a shadow coming from the basement. The basement had no door. It was just open. No one was home yet. We called out for Kate's parents and if they were home, they would have said something. Their driveway was empty. Their car wasn't there. We were terrified. Kate and I grabbed knives and we just stayed down on the kitchen floor. Nothing happened. After another hour, we went back to the sofas. We woke up to the sound of a girl screaming, help me! We sprang up and heard someone banging on the door, but we were too petrified because we saw another shadow next to the shadow from earlier. Terrified, we just made sure the door was locked and went back to the sofa. After 30 minutes, we were woken up again, but this time to a police car and ambulance lights coming through from the living room windows. We were exhausted and went back to sleep. Sometime during the early morning, Kate's parents came home. We were sleeping and heard a huge bang coming from Kate's room. This time, my uncle came up from the basement, which is where my aunt and uncle's room was. He was holding one of his metal bats. He was ready to protect us. With my uncle in front of us, we all went into the room. Nothing was on the ground and nothing had fallen. We knew we weren't crazy because even Kate's parents heard it. We never could explain what happened that night. The next morning, both Kate and my phone started working. After that day, I hated going to their house. I believe their house is haunted. Either that or someone was trying to come inside because they knew their car wasn't in the driveway and they thought they could break in. My name is Jasmine. One night my girlfriend and I were getting ready because we were going to head out for a night of fun. We got in the car and I don't know what got into us, but we were feeling very flirty and decided to park at a parking lot to do our thing. We were in the car doing our thing. I was on her in the driver's seat while she had the seat reclined. When we were moving around, I accidentally honked the horn with my butt. I looked at my girlfriend and told her, I hope that didn't draw any attention to us. She said, it's okay, it's like one in the morning. I doubt anyone is awake. So we continued. I kid you not, three minutes later, I put my head up to fix my hair and looked to my right what I saw made my stomach drop. There was a man on his knees, just watching us. I quickly jumped off my girlfriend into the passenger side, screamed and told her to drive off. As my girlfriend was trying to figure out how to put the seat up, the man got up and put his hands up. I got the most sickening feeling when I saw his hands were covered in blood. My girlfriend quickly locked the car door and got ready to drive off. Then the man told us, don't panic. I told my girlfriend to step on it, and when she did, I just remember looking back, seeing his face get all mad and quickly walk away from the area. As we were driving off, I was sitting there asking myself if he murdered someone. Could he be hurt? So my girlfriend decided to drive back to see what the fuck happened. I didn't want to, but I thought maybe he needed help. When my girlfriend and I went back, we saw two cop cars pass the area, coming from different directions. We were looking at each other, trying to figure out what was going on. When we drove back into the parking lot, he was gone. I don't know what he needed or why he had blood on his hands, but ever since that night, I always made sure my car door is locked, and now I carry a taser with me.
That Sunday, Steve was arrested, and when the police checked the CCTV, they clearly saw Steve going into the office and opening the master key cupboard room and taking a spare apartment 34 key and putting it in his cupboard. And then they saw Steve walking on the same floor where apartment 34 is based in. Then they saw Steve come back to the reception with his shirt a little bloody, and he wore a waistcoat to cover it up. When they took his fingerprints and DNA, they found that the deceased male was covered with Steve's fingerprints and DNA. All Steve could say was that he was trying to cause a conversation to happen 